Kav Alon Yahweh, Bahasham Yahushai, Bahasham Rakakudash. Double honors to the elders and apostles, great millstone of Ruel. I am not a member, however, I've entered into their labors. Peace and mercy, and to the sincere brothers and sisters doing this, wherever you are, whatever your life may be. Back at you with another quick one. Uh, just a couple of thoughts that I had uh, while out and about. And nothing was really coming to me, but um, I happened to see a scripture, and it's, it's, it's uh, Psalms 141, the fifth verse right here we have pulled up. But uh, if you read the whole thing, it's a, it's a good read, it's a good prayer, especially in the times that we're moving into. Um, if, if you haven't been under a rock or you've been following the men of the Great Millstone for some time, you see... Um, them and, and myself have all have said, or beginning with the elders, apostles on down, all have said that they will try to link those of us that believe to Islam, to some so-called T-E-R-R-O-R-I-S-T organization, and who knows what road the Lord will lead you on. Um, whether, you know, things may be a little bit smoother for some than they are for others, or, you know, it, it could be any which way. So it is imperative that you exercise faith, or that we exercise faith. It is imperative that we continue to pray. Don't ever forget that. Um, and there are times where you won't be in the spirit, but you got to pray your way out of that as well. And I'm uh, speaking from experience because... Over this last couple of days, it's been it's been rough. Um, so I don't say I don't talk about anything that I I can't back up or you know either with scripture or by experience and scripture. So we'll just g grab this, maybe could pull a couple in the NLT, link some precepts with it, and basically just <clears throat> for somebody whoever hears this. Uh, to be encouraged, don't be, you know, don't be afraid or don't be, uh, don't wallow in the lowest state that you're in, you know, don't sit in filth, in the filth being back in your worldly state, because, you know, there are times where we're up in the spirit and there are times where we're down. Okay, so this is a Psalm of David, Lord, I cry unto thee, make haste unto me, give ear unto my voice when I cry unto thee. And of course, we understand that we ought to be under the vibration of the Lord because he does not, according to the book of John, I just don't remember where, uh, willful, willful sinners will not be heard. Let me see. John 9 and 31. Okay, now we know that God does not hear sinners. But if anyone is a worshiper of Yahweh and does his will, he hears him. All right, many have latched on to this statement. That's, okay, that's something else. But quick, short, quick, and to the point. Okay, um, we're not going to go into this because this is probably just some uh, uh, Christian psycho babble. The scriptures plain, are plain and simple, and they speak for themselves. All right, let my prayer be set forth before thee as an incense. And the lifting of my hand, up of my hands, as the evening sacrifice. And you can go and look into, um, in the Torah, one of the five books, where <clears throat> it mentions what the evening sacrifice was for, right? There were multiple sacrifices throughout the day. Um, let's see. I won't go to it, but this will be something that you can look up on your own. Um, let's see. Oh, shoot. I had an eating sacrifice. Let's see that. No. That's where we're at. I needed in the. There we go. It 
it is either in Deuteronomy or Timothy Psalms 8. Okay. I don't want to go too far without it. Um, let's see. We'll come back to Psalms 141. Let's see if we can. It came to pass in the midday, and they were prophesied unto the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that there was neither voice nor any to answer. Uh, okay, maybe not. Well, you can look up. Um, you can look up how, um, you know, um, the custom of the evening sacrifice you'll do you can do that on your own uh, that's not the actual point of this video so we're going to move on and keep reading uh, but again you should look into that why they did it there was an evening sacrifice there was like you know you had your sin offerings you had different things of that nature under the first priesthood levitical priesthood all right under aaron okay set a watch oh yahweh before my mouth keep the door of my lips so let's pull that one. Take control of what I say, O oh Lord, and guard my lips, right? And that can also go into, um, you don't have to say everything that you think. You know, there may be times where you're trying to learn and you're trying to study and, you know, you're, you're watching one of the videos and it's, they're, they're talking about the, uh, the micro CHIP. Or they're they're getting on these other camps that are going on. They're getting on whoever, and you get tired of looking at that. You don't need to voice every damn thing that comes to your mind. Uh, you have to understand. Uh, I get to a point and pray about it to discern what thoughts are yours, what thoughts are holy, what thoughts are righteous, and what thoughts are of this world, what thoughts are carnal, things that don't need to be spoken. All right. Obviously, the Lord put the spirit on one of those men to do those videos or multiple of those men to do those videos, men to do those videos for a reason. So um, for one, lean not on your own understanding. And for two, pray to the Lord, guard your lips so you don't say anything stupid and condemn yourself. Incline not my heart to any evil thing to practice wicked works with men that work iniquity and let me not eat of their dainties. All right, so you don't want anything to do with wicked men. You don't want to partake in whatever reward that they got from their wickedness because the ultimate reward would be of those two-thirds, all right, that, that, that nuclear blast fodder. You pretty much just <laughs> judgment is a hot, fiery, maybe slow judgment be heading to you. People think that they got away with Oh, shit, let's get that. He gets, uh, come on, come on, give me the verbiage, please, because I can't think of it. Because the Lord does not judge a matter speedily, that's what it is. Tired of Ecclesiastes 8 and 11 because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Right? And that also brings out the scripture about the when you know you keep doing something and your conscience becomes seared like a hot iron. Okay? So we'll, re we'll reread. Four, incline not my heart to anything evil. And you can also, uh, when you pray it in your own words, you can also say, keep my eyes single 
and allow me to be focused on righteousness. Allow me to be focused, focused on things that please you. All right. And then to practice wicked works <clears throat> with men that work iniquity and let me not eat of their dainties. NLT again, do not let me drift towards evil or take part in acts of wickedness. Do not let me share in the de delicacies of those who do wrong. And then five was the one I saw. So, we'll, of course, we're going to read that. Let the righteous smite me. It shall be a kindness. And let him that reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil, which shall not break my head, for yet my prayer also shall be in their calamity. All right, and that goes into um, accepting rebuke from a righteous man instead of, uh, that's the best way, I, I would think, uh, as opposed to, you know, automatically getting judged. Let the godly strike me, it will be a kindness. If they correct me, it is soothing medicine. All right, so that means you can't be sensitive if somebody corrects you or, or <clears throat> of course, somebody in the truth or however they do it, focus on the message that they're giving you, not how they're saying it, right? And, you know, get out of your feels. Or, oh, how do the young kids say, get out of your fifis. <laughs> Accept it. Understand it as a kindness that is a Lord extending an olive branch to you. All right, do not let me refuse it. But I pray constantly against the wicked and their deeds. All right. Praying for the destruction of Babylon. Praying for the destruction of the heathen who inhabit the land that was promised to us from our father Abraham on down to Isaac and Jacob. Verse 6. When their judges are overthrown in, a stony places, in stony places, they shall hear my words for they are sweet. When their leaders are thrown down from a cliff, the wicked will listen to my words and find them true, right? So, of course, the, you know, nobody wants to hear you or nobody cares what you're saying um, now. But uh, when things turn up, right, when, they, when the oven gets a little bit hotter, then people are going to want to listen. But it'll be too late. And let me grab this precept right here for uh, verse 5. This is Hebrews 12 and 6. All right, the Lord chastising those who he loves. Hebrews 12, verse 6 and 7. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourges every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? And that could be many different ways. You could be, you know, you know when something comes upon you, you know.
Strong's H, 4364. Mechmar. Mechmar. Second entry. Mahmor. Mahmor. Third entry.